Well, hi guys, we are live to the Let's hi. Talk show and we are Welcome now streaming back. from Welcome. Abby's stage. Abby's so hopefully you will all oh, see hi. this video. Yes. Alright, let's do a quick recap. We've been gone for some time, for a couple of months, but we are so happy to be back. Thank We've you. been, let's call it hiatus, <laughs> and now we are here, we're ready Yay. to go. Today's topic is... Failures. Failure. Dealing with failure. Let's just give a quick recap for those that don't know us or for those who might have forgotten. Yechavit, our showrunner, she is a physician assistant. She's also a public speaker and on many different types of engagements. A mama, um, a bunch of kids, and, 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 and a, a housewife, I should say. And of course, Esther. Miss, Miss, as Mrs. Esther. She has a lot of different roles. Physician assistant, health coach, business coach, mother, wife. All of right. Tons. All those tons, fun tons, stuff. tons. And Avi, who's an incredible and psychotherapist. <laughs> Thank you for that. I, 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 I appreciate has it. tons of pets who he does therapy do. with do. to yes. help connect with patients and their emotions. And he's just really special. About I, that. I appreciate it's really that. It's interesting. Every time I go to a place to do pet therapy, everybody's always obsessed with the animals. Like, oh, they're so cute. I love them. What's her name? Like, this is Sophie. This is Oliver. This is Jack. I'm like, oh, it's so nice. I'm like, I'm Avi, if that matters. <laughs> Because it's not interesting to them. Not at all, and it's completely okay because I get so much pleasure to see right. everybody like playing with, with. They really are. Yeah. All right. That's so today we were gonna we were talking about failure. Mm -hmm. Just to give a quick recap, um, I saw this person walking down the street with a sign on his shirt saying "Failure is not an option." And from there, really, we can talk about how if that makes any sense, right? Because the only way to achieve success is really through a moment of failure because anyone you ask no matter how successful or un, you know unsuccessful a person is they will always be able to tell you the failures that they had throughout their life so Esther tell us what are your what are your I, thoughts I would that? really put that shirt and if I would na rename that shirt yeah. I would say failure is only failure if you make it final if you make it final ooh I love if, that if, yes if you're just growing through your failure you're right. actually becoming better at what it is you're trying to achieve you're not just kind of like falling apart and you know, those pitfalls, if you make them a grade, that's what they become. But right. really, they're just to help you move forward. It's, it's like, it, um, I know your husband always says down. that. She, you, you say, if it's not, if your story is not, what, what's the quote? Everything will be okay at the end. If it's not okay, it's, it's not, not the, the end. end. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So um, we were talking with, number one thing is when we're dealing, I'm just going to, for those of you who were tuned in before, we were doing a live before. For some reason, many people were not able to tune in. There was something wrong with the camera. So we're going to start again. We're just going to make this a really quick intro. Can you see it? So, no. um, go ahead, go, go ahead. If you go on my page. I will just my restart my Okay. Phone. So, um, number one thing is we want to talk about failure um, and how to be nice to yourself when we deal with failure. Because think about it this way. As soon as something bad happens to us, we are, the, we are our number one critics where we, we always uh, say things to bring ourselves down. Also, it's really important for us to understand that when we do fail to allow ourselves to be sad. It's okay to be sad. So many times people... It's okay being, to be sad. Being, being it's that, hard to be sad sometimes. <laughs> being that... <laughs> it's not necessarily about, you know, being sad, but allowing... Uh, to rephrase it, allowing ourselves to feel emotions. You know, mm -hmm. I want to just say, a few seconds ago, when I kind of disconnected the live and we went on and again... The reason we, it was so important to me, even though um, Avi and Esther were like, what are you doing? I actually think this is such an important show that it was worth for me to restart the entire show, but not have a show where we're going to have interruptions and we're going to be in the middle of nowhere. Why? Because I think there are many people in this world, including myself, and I was just saying, sorry to cut you off a few minutes ago, where I actually felt like a total failure even coming onto this show tonight, um, where if we don't realize that every single person goes through feeling where they are not perfect, where they failed, whether it is as a wife, as a mother, as a coworker, as a friend, right. if we don't realize that that's okay to feel that way, you're not alone, you're going to give up on wanting to become a better version of yourself because you're going to feel like there's no point to you. 
Mm-hmm. Like, what's the point of me trying to be a good mother? I failed. I can't. What's mm-hmm. the point of me going to work? I've been kicked out of a few jobs, so I'm never going to be a good worker. I failed so many tests, so I'm never going to graduate with anything. That's why we had to restart the show, and we had to come back, because even if we make it a 20-minute show, as opposed to a long one-and-a-half-hour show with many interruptions, the 20 minutes of this show, which I think is important, because I think Avi has a lot to say with his experience. I think we all have a lot to Esther say. Esther has a lot to say with her experience. Has a lot to say. <laughs> Even if we do that and somebody can walk away, because we don't do this show as much as it is so much fun. It's not about having fun. It's also about offering our personal um, examples, stories, lessons. You know what's interesting? This actually, this whole situation just taught me something. Um, For those, again, who are just tuning in now for the first time, just a couple of minutes ago, we were doing a live show on the Chavitz page. Uh, For some reason, the feed wasn't coming in. We had to cancel the show. It was such a great intro. It was such such good conversation. And we just, for those who watched it, watched it at that moment, and we ended the video. Mm -hmm. And then we had to just restart it three or four times, and we're now uh, streaming. So if you're just joining us, I want to give you a little example about what just happened. We made a great show. We, we, we were in touch the whole week. We were so excited to make this happen. And here we are, and the show fails. And now we're starting again. If, I, if this would have happened, I would say maybe two years ago, when we really just started Facebook, this would, make, this, this would give me like a full-blown <laughs> anxiety a panic attack yeah. because I would say, oh my gosh, well, everybody's we watching. Messed we messed up. How can this be? What's going on, right? Uh-huh. But because we did it over and over and over again, and we were on Facebook, and this was such a growth experience right. for myself yeah. to be able to be in front of a camera, it, it, it's, it's a very interesting process. I mean, what was it like for you to be able to go on the first time afraid of judgment, afraid of what people might think or might say, but going on now and really kind of building self-confidence, I should say, and oh my goodness, if you kind of go down through my page when I just started, you're like, wow, what a difference, right? Because... And I, I can't, can I say that that was a failure? Absolutely not, because I feel like that was a That's moment gross. of growth. So really, we can, we can apply any scenario in our life as an opportunity to see that in order to achieve any type of success, there has to be moments where you fail. Thomas, they asked Thomas Edison, the person who, who created the light bulb, right? They yes. said, you, you, th- you tried thousands so. of times to, you, you know, failed different, thousands. Uh, you failed thousands of times. Um, you know, so so to, to to figure out the light bulb, and and here you are. You now you figured it out. And what did he say? He said. He said, "I didn't fail a thousand times. I learned how not to do it a thousand times." There wow. you go. So it's all about it's all about it's all perception about how, and how we the see mindset. it. The mindset. It's all about really how you come into it, thinking, right. "What is this going to teach me?" Versus. I'm I'm a screw up or I'm right. gonna fail, and I think we need to teach our children. Yes, that. I was I was actually just going to transition yeah. to that and say, many times, especially when dealing with parents, mm-hmm. a lot of times parents that want that like one magical book, like right. give me that magical book, let me read that what book, and let me be a better parent. There's no such thing. Like as a therapist, uh, you know, every single person that comes into my practice, into my office. Every single person has their own treatment plan. Every single person has their own um, journey, their own path. What are, what are your thoughts, Yachavit? It's interesting you said what you said a few minutes ago about if this was a few years ago, how would we react, right? So there are many people that are just starting social media, and I look at them and I say to myself, oh my God, I wish I could give them a hug sometimes because I feel what it's like to be in the spotlight. When we're in the beginning, like you just said, when we just started doing this, It was all about, for me personally, I don't know how it is for both of you, but for me personally, I I valued my content based on how many likes or views it got. And if I felt that um, my videos got a lot of views, then I did a good job. And if my videos didn't get such a good view number, then I didn't do a good job. And that's how I kind of, that was my version of success. That if everybody commented and everybody said how great it was, then yay, I was great. But if all of a sudden this video didn't get as many shares or likes and I didn't do a good job and what was wrong with me. And then with time you realize, when you start to kind of realize, hey, how do I define my version of success and failure? 
If we define our success based on the feedback of people around us, we're actually failing. Because what we have to understand is everybody's version of what they are interpreting as perfect is different for everybody. For example, if you have a career dream and your career dream is to be a makeup artist and everybody else thinks you have to be a doctor or a lawyer or go to school and go to college and now everybody else is not going to support you for what you want to go for, it's almost like you're failing. But you are maybe the most successful because that's what you're good at. Right. That's actually what you're going to be a masterpiece at. Right. So sometimes we For have sure. to really, really, really take a step back and realize it's not always about how many people are going to cheer for you right. in order to determine how successful or how valued you are. Sometimes it takes one person to be your cheerleader and make you the greatest of what you're going to become. And the greatest cheerleader is yourself. Mm, yeah. I think what Yochaved, on a deeper level, what Yochaved is trying to say is when our identity is wrapped in to our success, meaning we become the success. What that means is, we think about it this way, and I said this, I said this last time, if you go outside and you get soaking wet, right? Are you the rain? No, you're not the rain. Right? You come home, you change. That, that was just one component of you. So any journey that we take on to understand that it's the, 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 the quest that you go on, that doesn't define who you are as a person. Just because you had a setback does not mean that this is defining you as what kind of person you are. We were saying, I, I said on the, on the previous time, I said, number one thing is being kind to yourself. When when you have a friend that messes up and is broken and shattered and they come to you and need a shoulder to cry on, what do you do? You comfort them. You, you say kind words to them. You encourage them. So then why is it so difficult to do that for ourselves? I, a lot of times I'll, I'll talk to, I'll share with my clients, like, go to the mirror and look in the mirror and just sit with that for a little bit. And talk to that person looking at you. Well, how do you feel that person looking back at you? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel content? And a lot of times, people will say no. They don't feel comfortable. They feel very weird and awkward giving themselves that, that, that boost, that talk. But number one thing is when you start off the day is to be able to give yourself that pump. Uh, Esther, what are your thoughts? Yesterday, I had uh, just actually, I didn't think about this until just now, even though we discussed this title for like a little while. I had this real conversation yesterday with my husband and my oldest son, and I just started crying in front of them, and I said, I really failed at this. It was a situation with, as a friendship that I, fail, I felt that I didn't do the right thing, mm -hmm. and I just kept, my, my emotions kept getting in the way of my behavior to want to be better, and I just couldn't figure out how to remove that piece from myself and just see this person with more compassion. Mm -hmm. It was really hard for me because my button that gets pushed is like um, own your behavior and be behave correctly. And if you don't, mm -hmm. then I can't look at you in such a way. So when, when I found out something about this person, I, I told my husband, I said, now I really can't make it work anymore because... Um, I really feel like God was giving me this opportunity to fix this character flaw. I know it's for me that, that this situation, this, this thing has unfolded itself into my life. But I just kept saying, like, I wish it would go away already. Like, mm -hmm. I just wish I didn't deal with this. And, and I told my husband and my son, like, I really failed myself. I failed the situation. I failed the person. And my husband and my son, and I was so, like, touched by this. They're like, you can stop still make it right like you didn't fail I said what do you mean what can I do I they're like every mo it doesn't matter what happened up until now it matters the next moment like how you choose wow. to step forward wow. to the next step and I said but what is that because I keep failing that <laughs> so, but so, based on what you said yeah. in the beginning the first time yeah. you said a person falls so many seven times, times seven times it's a over... fall seven times but gets back up again how about a tzedekis uh, also <laughs> well, you might even know about a, 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 a thousand yeah. times right um, can I ask you a question Abby give us a situation if it's not too personal oh of a situation where you felt like you are a failure, a failure. but wow. actually you weren't really a failure. Oh my it's how goodness. you thought you were oh, a failure. By the way, just this was completely non-conscious, but look at what happened. As soon as she asked me that question, 
I folded my arms. Did you notice that subconscious guard I just put up? Like, but uh -oh. let's let's release. <laughs> release. Let's take exactly. But um, if I ever fail, uh, of course I failed. I failed. I failed so many times. Um, and I think you know, Esther. I can very much relate to what you said um, in the first in the first video that in school that you weren't always the greatest student and. I wasn't you, even an average person. An average, ad, right, an average student. So <laughs> I should say, really I should say, I was being nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I should say that, you know, I can, I can, I can very much um, uh, relate to that as well. Because I did not, like you said, you know, our parents were immigrants when they came here. And um, for a person who's coming into, a, you know, a new, a new place, place. It's, it's, it's very difficult to know what school to put them in and give them the, you know, whether it's uh, the, the education. And when I came in, um, I didn't, there, were, there weren't that many schools that, you know, that I was able to mm -hmm. achieve the highest level of education. And mm -hmm. even teachers that, I, that, I, that were teaching at the moment, um, long story short, I wasn't in the best schools and I wasn't getting the best grades. And for a very, very long time, that was kind of, you know, on my chest and it bothered me so much. And I, I failed many, many times in school. Right. And actually until I went to but college. But that taught you so much. Well, that, that did, but it definitely was a journey. Every Anything I achieved, any type of success, there are some people, you know those people who are able to just look at something <laughs> and, and just ace the test and get a hundred. We all I, hate that person. I was That's never, I was never that person. <laughs> I had to really break my head and study and, and read over and over and same, over and same. over again to understand yeah. the concept. Uh, and I guess this is my journey. This is my path. Yeah. You know? So and this, there's so many different things, so many different challenges that come up along the way. Um, and yeah, for sure, you know, you'll beat yourself up for it. Um, again, you'll always ask yourself, why does this happen to me? Why am I dealt with this type of hand? You know, um, and I was saying this on, on the previous slide and we got cut off exactly at this time. But imagine you you decide to go on vacation, yeah. and you pack your bag, you get your luggage, and you know a regular simple luggage from Walmart or you know some uh, what is it TJ Maxx yeah. or Target store right Costco Costco so you get your luggage you fill it up with clothing and you go to the airport and all of a sudden in the airport you see this other person across you with this like really expensive Louis Vuitton or Gucci bag and you're thinking to yourself like. Wow, that's a cool bag. And they ask you, hey, you want to switch? And you're thinking to yourself, like, I'm going to go on this vacation. I have all my specific things in there that I like. I have my specific shoes and my specific, uh, yeah. you know, jacket that I like. There. I don't, you know, I mean, that might be a fancy bag, but I really can't use anything that's in there, right? Wow. And you don't take that bag. And you just take your own bag and, you, you know, you board the flight. Same thing in our life. Just because... Somebody else's lawn looks greener than ours does not necessarily mean that you know this. that this mo is that lawn is, is 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 um is built for us. And again, especially being a therapist, working with people, and listening to the most vulnerable things that people express, we're able to see that everybody has their own lot. Everybody, and guess what? Just because they're going through those struggles, and I see this every single day, and for me, this is something that keeps me going further, and they, you should know, they give me a lot of strength by hearing how they're able to succeed on in their journey. To be able to, every single person that has these troubles, guess what? They also have uh, um, um, the, the, the answers to their problems. I see this all the time. What, what are your thoughts? I think you mean, I love the analogy with the bag. I think that's, Drop the mic. that's, that's great. That's great. Um, I want to ask Esther now the same question. All right. What was a moment, I know you shared your story about how you were growing up and school was very difficult for you. Any other story that you can share where you felt that it's you're failing, but in reality you realize you really weren't failing? Yes, I did. I had, yeah, actually I did. Um, I, I really worked hard in, in college. I went to Shiva University. And um, I was really excited. I was going to go to Columbia University because they had a hybrid program for occupational therapy. And I took all of the courses for OT. I went to NYU to, to the, to the, to the um, volunteering. I did volunteering at another. I was like in it. You know what I mean? Like if, you, if they told you, did you? I did that twice. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so when I get all my re references, recommendations from all these teachers who have done this many times, they all tell me, you're a she -win. You're going to get in. 
So what do you think happens when you get a really thin letter in the mail from Columbia University? You excited, you think maybe that's how they do acceptance letters. So you open it up and you are heartbroken. Like I cried. I was like, I'm not even waitlisted. Like how did that happen? My GPA, everything wow. looked appropriate. I cried such bitter tears, and I remember, you know you remember those failure moments, you remember where oh, you yes. were, I was in my mom's oh, house, yes. I just got married, I just found out I was pregnant, and my mom looked at me, I remember she probably offered me some food for sure, because like, <laughs> this is the solution for tears in, in a Bukharian home, right, so she says to me, Estera, this is good, you'll see, it's okay, wow. I'm like, what kind of state, this is not helping mom, I need to get into this school for me, this is the, this is the only wow. place I applied. So I'm not not a smart choice for probably, but at the time it felt like yeah. it was a real shoe. And what happened after? I'm not an OT. I'm a PA. It's funny. I went to the same program and I didn't get accepted to Columbia University. No, I went to OT program ah. and they rejected me to Columbia. No, Which, Turo. Turo. Yeah. Yeah. And so look at that. They're actually, both they're they're both so PAs. So funny, right? They both I, got rejected. I got, from the re OT I got rejected from that program. And now they are killing it in the in the medical field. Look at that. Yeah. And, and when I did get accepted at York, I got accepted to both the OT and the PA program at the same time. Really? Yeah, it was a really bizarre situation. Wow. But at that point, I was like, I was, Hashem is giving me the You know what? Really, failure is perception. It's perception and perspective. If you feel you failed, it's time to change not what you're doing, but how you're seeing what's happening. It's so interesting. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Say what you want no, to no, say. No, no, go, go, go. They both gave examples of schooling when I asked them a question about failure. Let's hear yours, Yechavad. That's what's interesting. We actually interpret failure with tests. I failed a test. Right. I failed oh, in true. school. Wow. That's true. Actually, my story of failure has nothing to do with school. And in the beginning, when I share the story, I kind of, I told Avi yesterday, when we had a little bit of like a rundown, what my story would be. And today I kind of said, you know, I don't think I should share this story. I kind of felt like, a little embarrassed that I thought that was a failure, uh -huh. but I, but now I feel like I'll share it anyways because somebody maybe needs to hear this, and if somebody felt like I'm, 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 I'm getting ready I, I'm because watching. I don't know what she's talking about, uh, maybe that's gonna help somebody else. Okay, so when we come from the culture that we come from, um, we are obviously I wasn't born here, Esther wasn't born here. It happens to be with childbirth. We were raised. Um, that if you give birth naturally, you are considered, wow, she gave birth herself, excellent. But if you gave birth via C-sections, because C-sections back in the days, mm, and not in America, one. Oh, yes. were considered to be in very, very um, last resort yeah. situations. Like something yeah. terrible had to happen yeah. for you to have had a C-section. So with that culture and upbringing and mindset, and a lot of times even families yeah, it won't was even like, celebrate the birth. When I was going into my first labor, of course, like every other mother, and you see, I could talk about it freely now, yeah. but like every other mother, my dream was, of course, to give birth naturally, right? To to be able to do it by myself because that's what's celebrated. But I failed in my mind when I had my first C-section. It was like, oh my God, wow. I failed. I couldn't give birth by myself. Something is wrong with me. Again, now it's like, am I crazy? How did I even think of that? But back in the day, instead of feeling so happy that I have a healthy child and I did so well, it was like, no, I don't want anybody to know that I didn't give birth by myself. And I actually remember how embarrassed I was to tell wow. people wow. that I had a C-section. Really? Yeah, wow. because it was like, no, I can't. I, have to, I, have I to be did. Great. I did. He I that. did hear of this. I did hear of this. This wow. is actually pretty common. You'll be surprised, but it is pretty common that women will be embarrassed uh, to share that they had a C-section because they feel like. It wasn't a real birth, it wasn't but a real birth. But now people friend. actually request to do C-sections, meaning right. now here in America, this is very, very, very accepted and yeah. there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with it. But when you're coming from a society and a culture where people only used it as last resort, where it was emergency situations yeah. and it doesn't go this way, it's almost like, no, how did that happen? The, man, the doctor probably shouldn't have rushed you and they, there's such a guilt trip about it wow. where it's almost like That's maybe okay. there was something wrong with the whole situation and then you say to yourself but who cares wow. 
how you gave birth, but who cares? It's the process is not what matters. Wow. What matters is having a healthy child. What matters is having a mother who's alive and well, and she's right. feeling well. So I think sometimes people that have hard times giving birth, uh, getting pregnant, raising children, having children with disabilities, oh, they yes. sometimes oh, will yes. come across like they're failures, like they couldn't have a healthy can I, child. Can I actually share something? Wow, first of all, Yechavet, I, and this is exactly these examples that you bring both of you guys to the table. Are, you, you both are being so vulnerable and open, and I think these are the most teaching moments, even for myself hearing it, it gave me chills, to, to be able to see that even though through a moment like that, you can get strength and be able to now talk about it. You said something about failing as a parent. I remember... Uh, on the, I was on the phone with a parent who was really in a lot of pain because they said that they have uh, a sick child and they want it, and their child really loves swimming. Okay, um, but so I said, okay, great. So I think that's an amazing way to be able to connect with your child. They said, yeah, but I can't take my child swimming. I said, why not? They said, because my child uses a very loud tone of voice when she wants to get a message across. I said, so what's wrong with that? She's like, I'm afraid that people are going to turn around and they're going to look and they're going to make me feel uncomfortable and I don't want to make an uncomfortable situation. I said, I understand that, but your daughter is not well. So what does it really matter what people are going to think and what people are going to say? And this is something that we need to internalize and really hold dear to our heart because there will be moments where, yes, people will judge you. And that's the biggest thing when it comes down to failure is that we are so embarrassed and so scared for somebody to look at us and be like, ha you didn't make it, right? But really to say that I matter most. That's the most important. The, the, the biggest takeaway is that in a moment before that lady who wanted to take her child swimming was didn't didn't feel comfortable doing that because her child was not well and the child the way the child spoke and the you know she had flapping hands i believe the child was um, autistic mm. so the child you know had flapping hands and would 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 run and would would you know speak very loudly so the mother was embarrassed what people might say at that point at that moment it's not about the people because guess what People will always talk. This it's, is just how, how it is. Go ahead. It's funny because I have friends who are divorced, right? Okay. And they feel embarrassed yes, because it's almost yes. like I have a failed marriage. Yeah. I wasn't able to stay with my partner. Right. And meanwhile, right. they're sitting and really internally feeling like, why couldn't I have been loved? Yeah. And why are people probably talking about me? But when you hear the story of the kind of marriage they were in, and there was infidelity and cheating and this and that, and you kind of say to yourself, well, that's abusive. Nobody has to go through that. But then you know to yourself that what society looks as normal, and of course it's normal, uh, meaning for society to be married and to have children and to have like this perfect, what looks to be perfect marriage, but if that's not how it is, and if a person is in an abusive relationship, right. maybe they're not failing by letting go of abusive relationship. Maybe they're succeeding because they're able to open their doors in having a very peaceful, positive life. I actually, I actually asked somebody once. I said, um, "Share, you know, like one of the happiest moments of your life," and they said, "My divorce." Oh. Wow. And I said, "Wow, that's so interesting. Tell me about that." And I said, once I got divorced, I felt like all my doors opened up for me. I became the person I'm meant to be. I'm able to live my authentic life, my authentic self. And it really kind of like a light bulb went on is that, yes, you're right, Yochavet. So many people get divorced and they feel like, that's it. My life is over. I failed in this life. So I might have these couple of kids and I'm divorced. And who's going to marry me? And who's going to take me? And they create this narrative, this story, this negative story for themselves. And they kind of live in that. But once they either go to therapy or they talk to a friend and talk to a close one and understand that, no, that was that might have been just one component, one part of your life, but it does not define the rest of your story. Just like you said, if it's not, uh, well, what is it? If it's everything not, will be okay at the end. Yeah, it's not okay, it's not the if end. If it's not okay, it's not it's the end. Like Whatever. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe live till 120. <laughs> But, okay. but that's exactly, that is exactly the takeaway is that, yes, there will, there will be uh. moments like a person goes through divorce or sometimes, um, a lot of times, and this happens with, let's say, religious families. Again, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just giving you an example. Let's say you have um, a very religious family and then you have one of the children who may not be as religious or might not be religious at all, right? A lot of times you'll have parents who are embarrassed, right? 
Um, but a lot of times when I when I'll work with families, I'll, I'll have parents saying, you know, I want my child to wear a black hat, or I want my child to go to school with me, or I want my child, and they create this type of um, story for their child. But at the end of the day, it's like, one second, who are you doing this for? Are you doing this for your child, or are you doing this so you don't get judged by people? It's so important to understand, especially when dealing with children and teens, they are at the most vulnerable state. Love is the most important thing, especially at that moment. So judgment and talking about failure and, and parenting, a lot of times, yes, when working with parents, parents don't want to fail. They want to become the best parents. But guess what? There's no such, a, there's no such thing as the best parent because even if you do everything you can to the T, trying your best, Whatever it may be, sending them to the best schools, sending them to karate and piano classes and all these different uh, extracurricular activities and giving them an allowance and being the best parent, when they grow up, there will be certain characteristics that they'll say, I didn't like this about my parent and I didn't like that about my parent. This is just the circle of life. So the, end, the takeaway is really do the best that you can, understanding that you are just a, a messenger. That's what it is. I see you're smiling. Go ahead. I was just remembering my um, when when my oldest was uh, in kinder, it's like pre K, U P K. They gave him like some uh, writing assignment. He was just mm -hmm. learning how to read and write. And I remember my husband and I. We were like, we are on this. We are parents, and we are going to raise this kid to be uh, an extremely, extremely educated individual. And um, I remember, like, we, we were afraid to fail as parents. And what, what happens when you have this fear of failure, you end up um, having a lot of impatience with, uh -huh. with life. Because, yes, yeah. because you can't just let time teach it. You're like, let's do this now. And I remember thinking, I want you to be able to do it perfectly. No, cross it off, do it again. No, I'm the mm. poor child. Like, I don't know, I must have... Yes. There must have been some miswiring at that yeah. point already early on. He was about four. No, it's, it, I think I think it's about it's about being. A, we you, learn. We learn with him. You wanted to. It's interesting because they say do uh, with the first, you know, with the first child, you don't allow, you don't let anybody hold your kid. You know, you want to, mm -hmm. you, you want, you want to be the only one to hold it. You have a schedule. You have a system in place, right? And then with the second one, you let them crawl, and with the third one, they're eating off the floors, and you're fine with it, right? Um, I know that, uh, I think Zoya said, it all has to do also with personality. Yeah. Yes, it does have to do with personality. I believe what Zoya, one of the comments she wrote is that um, dealing with failure has to do with personality. Absolutely. So let's talk about how personality gets developed. It gets developed from the, from the moment that we're born, right? From things that are happening in our life, um, from the people around us in our environment, uh, that condition us to be a certain type of way. And if this keeps going on and on and on and on, our own identity, our true identity, ends up being buried six feet under. So now when we become an adult, and a lot of times adults will have childish tendencies and characteristics, and you wonder why, like, hello, this is this is a 30, 40-year-old person. Why are they still acting like a seven-year-old child, right? Yeah. It's because we all have that inner child in us. We all do. A lot of times when people come into therapy, even though the 40-year-old person is sitting on the couch, it's actually we're working with the seven-year-old that's inside their heart. And oftentimes, when we help that seven-year-old inside their heart, the trauma becomes reprocessed, and they're able to really handle the failure or whatever the, it is that they're going through. Wow. I, I, that's a great point. As far as uh, personalities, for sure it has a lot to do because I feel like people who are with a very low self-esteem as yeah. it is, they will definitely be more prone to interpreting things as failures quicker than those people that have a very, very high self-esteem because people with a high self-esteem, they don't right away feel like, okay, I failed. They feel like, so what? It's okay. Everybody goes through this. But I also feel like as much as it has to do with the personality and our self-esteems, it also has to do with our cultures. I think cultures have a humongous role yes, in sure. how we interpret things. Sure. Because if you talk to people from different cultures, what, what what's acceptable for our culture and not acceptable for our culture is like, what, seriously, you guys can't accept that right. for somebody else. So I feel like sometimes, not sometimes, a majority of the time, cultures have a humongous role on what we internalize as failures and yeah. successes. Because if the culture states that you have to tolerate X, Y, Z, and we don't tolerate XYZ, 
then it's like a lot of people will start talking about this person because a lot of people are going to start spreading rumors about this person because it's not in the culture to be a certain way. So although we don't promote divorce and we never say divorce is good, right? When you start to say that there are people that have that are happier because they escaped abusive marriages, sometimes culturally people will be like, no, you can't promote that. We can't, we can't say that it's good to get divorced, but nobody says it's good to get divorced. We're saying that only if God forbid there's an abusive relationship that sometimes that's why it exists. So does that make sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. What I will say yes. is like this. A lot of times when working with couples, I always make sure to tell them I do not have an agenda as to what happens in this room, meaning in this in this therapy room, right? I say my goal is not to keep you married. My goal is not to get you guys divorced. Your your it's it's your goal, whatever it is that you want. If you want to make this marriage work, let's make it happen. If you feel that both of you will lead a healthier, happier, more successful life separately divorced, let's go for it. Years ago, yes, there was this 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 concept that if you got divorced, you are you are a failure. Right okay. now that we're living in the free world, it's it's un, you understand that this is your life. You don't live for anybody. If you're living in an abusive relationship and you're trying to make it work, yes. What I will say is like this. I just want to give a disclaimer. Marriage is a lot of work. It's a twenty-four hour non-ending cycle. It is constant, 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 constant work. Constant work. Okay, so. I'm a hundred percent. So if you did everything, everything in your power to make it work, whether you communicate, whether you have date night, whether you go to counseling, you do all these things. And at the end of the day, you end up seeing that this is a toxic relationship and everything you're doing, it's just not, you guys are two different people. Then divorce is an option because especially when there's kids involved, a lot of times people will say, Oh, I'm going to stay in this relationship because of the kids. Guess what? Guess what? The worst thing that you can do for your kids is being in a toxic and negative relationship and them seeing the, the two people that they value the most bickering and fighting and at each other's throats. It's, I one time made a statement and I said that we can't live for people. We have to live for ourselves. We have, Meaning we have to do what's good for us and be happy with who we are. Just like Avi said, there are, one parent can have different types of children. And if one child is not exactly what we wanted this child to become, but he's the best version of himself, of who he could become and his potential, we should be proud of that child, right? So when I made that statement one time, I got somebody... Uh, calling me and, and sending me a voice note about how wrong I was for making such a statement. Mm. And I and I didn't really like let it like I, I didn't put so much thought into it because I realized that a lot of things that's being said here, for example, is also dependent on how people interpret it. Like if somebody interprets what's being said with a grain of salt and really understanding globally of what the concept is that nobody promotes divorce. Nobody promotes going out of what uh, your parents dreamed for you. Nobody says don't go to college and get a degree. If people don't interpret things the wrong way and interpret things with, you know, with a, like a half full glass, we're not going to pick on things and say, well, why is this said and why is that said? Everything, Everything is generalized. So think about it this way. And I, a lot of times this comes up in, in session when I work with people and they say, um, and let's say I say to them, you matter most, right? And they say to me, wait, but isn't that kind of selfish? Like, why don't they think about other people? So I say, think about it. Like, here we have here we have a plate of peaches, right? Look, look at this gorgeous plate of peaches, right? Imagine I have a family of, of six, and I give every single person a peach, okay? And I take my peach, and I give it away, right? That's being selfless, right? Now, if I take everybody's peach and I eat all the peaches, right? That's being selfish. But if I give everyone a peach and some, and I take a peach for myself and somebody says, Hey, can I have, a, can I have your peach? And a lot of times this happens with parents. You know, when you serve children food, like, right? Let's say you get a, you, you get a, a, a pie of pizza and everybody ate and everybody's good. And you sat down and you're just about to eat your sandwich and your kid runs up to you and says, can I have some? You're like, but you just ate, right? So a lot of times, a lot of times, parents will break off their own and give it to their kids. But let's get back to the peach story. When you eat all the peaches, that's selfish. When you give away all the peaches, that's selfless. But when the person says, can I have your peach? 
and you say, you have your peach, now I'm going to have my peach, right? That's assertiveness. Mm. Establishing assertiveness. That's Powerful. really, really important. It's absolutely Boundaries. not being selfish if you're saying, I'm living in a toxic relationship and you have parents that might say, you're going to divorce, you're going to embarrass the family name, what's going to be with the kids, and they create this whole story as you're just going to be so screwed if you get divorced. But you know, at the end of the day, that when you're living in a toxic relationship, go ahead. I want to just, I, I want to finish your thought. When you're living in a toxic relationship, to understand and create boundaries, something that you were, you were touching upon. Boundaries are so, so, so important. There's negative, toxic people all around. It's about how... You uh, create that boundary and who you allow to your life. I know we're going off topic, but I know. Just we're gonna wrap it up soon because it's late. But I just want to add. You know, you said if you're in a toxic relationship, it's okay to. So here's what um, I think. I think a lot of people like there was a time in my life in my marriage, and I think you guys can vouch for this for your own maybe. Where I believed I was in a toxic Mm -hmm. relationship and I was in a toxic marriage, and my husband didn't understand me and I didn't understand him. Does that mean I should get divorced? Absolutely. No. No. So when we say if you're in a toxic relationship, what we really mean, I think, is how you are working through it with your partner and understanding your marriage is an evolution Mm -hmm. of the two of you. Right. Um, And and yes, there are marriages that don't evolve. Like they kind of live their full life cycle and this is as good as it gets. And you're working through it and it's not getting better. But there are a lot of marriages. I was just talking to a girl the other day for one hour. And she's a lovely woman. She has, I don't know, a few kids. She's been married a few years. And she says, I think I should get divorced. And I started talking to her. And you know what? It sounds like on the surface, this is a toxic relationship. Because she's sharing with me all her pain. So when when I ask her, share with me what you fell in love with with Mm -hmm. him. It shifted the whole mood in her voice. It shifted the tone. It actually, it was hard for her to tell me at first because she hadn't primed her brain. You know, a lot of us think toxic. I'm in a toxic relationship. You got to take a look at, you know, if you're identifying red cars because you own a red car, you won't notice any other color. So if you're not priming your mind to recognize the valuable pieces of your partner, Yes, it will become more toxic because right. you're not part of the solution. I, o- so, I also, sorry. Go ahead. I, I personally, like my husband said, when we just got married, the most, imp- the, the, one of the most important statements he said was never put divorce as an option. Like, like don't like, even they all bring the same that class. topic <laughs> into your marriage. Day. Like, don't even make that statement. Like, divorce should be the last, last, last resort because. Like like both of you said, marriage is very, very difficult. But part of it being so beautiful is despite the difficult moments, you still come to terms and you still uh, are, are make people. love and you still have memories and moments together. It becomes toxic when we ourselves interpret every little disadvantage quote unquote as being toxic we're not talking about toxicity where my husband got me the purple bag instead of the black bag i wanted we're not talking about my husband came 15 minutes late and he didn't call me we're not talking about that when we say toxic we're really referring to real like somebody's beating somebody up abuse again avi might say because he's a psychotherapist so for him Toxicity may be something with a finer line, but be, so right? again, what you were saying, like uh, sometimes where where the person does, can't make it work. If let's say you're dealing with somebody and you, they're both coming to therapy and saying, "Okay, this is your homework and this is your homework," and then they come back the next week and we're like, "Okay, so how did the homework go?" And one partner did it, and the other one's like, "Yeah, I'm just I'm checked out." Yeah, and they, like they already they already. Um, are becoming different people and don't have that chemistry and are not wanting to work. The first question I, I asked the, 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 the couple is, can we make this work? Wow. Would you like to make this work? Do yeah. you guys want to stay married? Right. If you both want to stay married... That's what then, I asked her also. 
Yeah. I asked that too. But you know, but I feel like yeah. sometimes, I mean, say if I'm wrong, by the way, obviously we don't have to be beaten up in order to feel toxic. You know what I mean? I was just going uh, right. straight I mean, by the way, that, does, that does happen. But I'm just it's, saying, you know, there's some people be like, well, I wasn't beaten up, I got divorced. No, no, you know what I mean. I'm saying like we shouldn't jump into conclusions. It's also, it's right physically, away. emotionally, <laughs> psychologically. Like, 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 oh my God, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, you know, Avi, when you said that, do you see yourself having a future. Personally, I think like I'm married 18 years, right? And I know wow, there are people married that. longer, we but there that. are within the, <laughs> within the like long time when you're married, there are moments in your life where you feel like maybe I made a mistake, maybe we're not meant for each other, maybe this, maybe that, because sometimes certain things happen and you kind of feel like you disconnected, but it's yeah. temporary. So if we overreact and we take an action right away at that moment, Without, like Esther said, taking a step back and saying, well, why did I fall in love with this person? But maybe if this you person... You want to work with this person. Right. So some, aren't there moments in our life where we do feel like maybe we're not um, really... A lot, a lot of times I'll see this where there's resentment in the relationship. And usually that happens. And I, brought, right. I talked about this uh, Talk in about the previous this. slide. Um, is that when we 100% immerse ourselves and throw ourselves into the relationship and sacrificing our own identity. I always say this in every relationship, there are three entities, the husband, the wife, and then the couple. It's very important to remember just because you're in a relationship, still to do the things that you love to do, so create your own empire. Yes, he will create his empire, whatever that may be. She will create her empire, whatever that may be. And then they together will create their empire. For example, uh, building a home together, having raising a family together, right? But if there are things that each one of them like to do individually, it's so important to be able to give them space, uh, give them yeah. space and allow that to happen. Because the women struggle. I mean, I personally struggled with that. Like my husband needed his own time with mm, his own space. Okay. And I was just like, don't we want to spend time together all the time? Who doesn't want to spend time together with your spouse all the time? It was too much. So to, 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 to wrap it up for tonight, yeah. and I know our, our uh, tradition, let's call it, our very long awaited, I actually missed this part of the show. Yeah, our good. tradition is to bring out some games at the end of the show to share with all of you. So for tonight, um, just for tonight, we're just going to show you a couple, but we're going to play one game. Um, I for tonight, this. there's a game called Love Languages. Ooh. We're not going to we're not going to play this one tonight. Uh, maybe another time. It says Better Language for Better I Love. Want that you one. can get it on Amazon. It's really cool. There's another one. It's called Topics. Uh, you can get it on online. Uh, another one called Deeper Connections. You can get it online too. We're, we're going to definitely you play this. Love it. I absolutely do. And in all honesty, we've been married. We've been married a number of years, but um, uh, you think you know a person, and then you start playing this game. You can have one question can last <laughs> like, like you think you, you know a you, you, no, no, really. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you're married 18 years. You think you, you know your totally husband. Play this game and you, see if you, don't you, know you him. think you know your husband, but you're gonna ask him one question for one question. You some questions you can, you know, it's going to be a minute, sure. and some yeah. questions you know you'll be on it for like 30 minutes discussing the depths of each personal lives yeah. we actually played it with my wife this past Shabbos and it was really intense like we I think we only went through one card and it's really amazing to know how you got deep... your money's worth on that one yeah 100% so today we're actually going to be playing a game that's called coping skills I bought it on Amazon a really awesome game and I'm going to ask some it is kind of personal so tell us if you if you feel if you feel comfortable sharing i'm kind of putting them on the spot um but esther we're going to start with you let's let's esther. mix let's mix the deck up so so we don't know what's coming here we go you guys ready for this by the way All i right. want to hear your comments did you like the show oh yes uh somebody's saying if i can call them after sure um <laughs> what's the name of the game this game that we're call oh, we are going to be playing is called coping skills um you can you can find it on amazon i'm thinking actually to put it on my instagram uh, like a whole bunch of games here we go you ready yes okay esther how well do you use the concept one day at a time as a coping skill hmm. I, I don't really use that i don't really use that as much as i need to mm, really? <laughs> one day at a time all right so yeah, what do you think yeah. What do you yeah, think yeah, of? What do you think about I did that, that more when I was in a crisis mode, like okay. like uh, when I was back in, in. No, for real, like when I was in school, 
Um, and that was my coping mechanism. When I was in school and I was stressed out and I was constantly under like chronic stress, I was like one day at a time, just through this test, just through this day, just through the Shabbat, everything just kneel, like just, just get through the shower. Like everything was just, wow. just this moment at a time. Yeah. But now I feel like uh, I'm in like the best place of my life that I've ever wow. been. Wow, look at yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like I think yeah, it's, I think it's, 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 it's a white blazer. <laughs> Guys, my sister gave it to me. But, um, but yeah, I, I really, listen, sometimes, like I like the word you used, when I was in crisis. A lot, of mo a lot of times, yeah, our life can be balanced. And then something happens where we have a dip, and that's a crisis mode. Right. So this is a coping skill that you can definitely use question, um, whenever you're feeling it's down. Okay, Yochabit, you ready for it's yours? I am ready. Okay, let's, let's mix it around. I'm let's mix nervous. it around. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. You ready? Yes. Ooh. How well do you use keeping in touch with friends or family and getting support as a coping skill? All the time. All the time. Tell us about it. Actually, I am a very, very big believer in calling a certain person for a certain situation. For example, Interesting. depending on the situation, I will call a certain friend. Uh -huh. She's told me this too. Just <laughs> like there are some people that will call this one specific right. friend for everything. I actually have a bunch of different friends. She, and different, there's a role of this. different categories. I Today love I'm that. Dealing with the... <laughs> I mean, Yochavit has many, 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 many friends. Depending on the situation, I wow. will call a certain Look friend based on who will probably guide Serious me <laughs> in the right direction for that particular situation because it's the expertise of the situation that matters. Wow. That is so yeah. interesting. Having a, a strong support system, talking about coping skills. This is, we want this life to be something beneficial that you can apply to yourself. This is absolutely not therapy. I want to just let you know, yeah. this is not therapy. Right. We're just having a conversation. For example. We're just having a conversation, but yeah. this is a, a tool that you can use. When I wanted um, to lose weight, I knew the friend to call. <laughs> Essa, she's the number one. <laughs> right? So, there you go. You're so sweet. All right. All right. Okay, let's go. <coughs> I think we should take that card, her card, out of the mix. I did. Okay. Okay, let's, oh, let's see what Avi's going to oh get. All right, I'll mix it up for you. I was going to say the one right after. Right? It's, it's, you know, go ahead. How right? well, let's see, you have Avi, mm. how see, well this is a great question. do you oh. use kindness to yourself as a coping skill? This is great because you we were just wow. like, I want Rivka to answer that question. How well do I use kindness? <laughs> Rivka, how well do I use kindness? Do you want to answer? Um, how well Sorry. do I use kindness? Actually, I will tell you, um, the most the most fulfilling thing I do, and I look at it as kindness, is when I work with my animals, with people, that fills me up with so much joy you don't even imagine when imagine you see a person wow. in a wheelchair bawling crying saying how they lost their, their their pet or they their animal died and they're not able to they're or they're, they have an animal but they're not able to go home and they're able to get that comfort from the animal that just does something for me so you're i think literally that's literally living in your essence i i that. I, that's I, right. that's I, that is that is me that is destiny. my identity yeah that's beautiful all right go ahead esther's turn all right all right and then after this we're round. gonna go one more round one more round and then we are going to wrap She's up looking through the questions you can't look through the questions <laughs> there you a <laughs> cheater <laughs> Sorry, I thought I was allowed no you're not looking allowed for something good okay you read this right, i don't know what go. i chose how well do you do uh, how well do you do in getting your needed hours of sleep as a method of to cope? Oh, it's terrible! Wow, really this is one of the six habits that I coach people in: healthy sleep. Uh -huh. And I, I really, um, I kind of this is this is something I have put for myself. I actually, have a coach that I work with to help me. Wow! And I told her like I need to sleep better. So wow. sleep is important. You know, you should you should not use electronics for like thirty minutes to an hour before bedtime. Who right. does that, right? I actually just want to commend you right. on sharing something right now. You said uh, a coach that you work with. I also, yeah, I also, I am a therapist, but I also will work with a yeah. therapist. Sometimes clients will sure. ask me, like, do you see a therapist, right? And the answer is yes, of course. <laughs> Any good professional will right. always have a professional as a consultant right. to be able to Absolutely. really, to be yeah, able to talk why. about... Um, how they're dealing, how they're coping, how they're able to help Sleep others. Sleep is essential for quality right, of your brain, so I very quality much respect of your day, that. which is why we're going to wrap it up. for Avi, and then I get the... Wait. Wait, that's for you. That's for you. Okay. Okay. How well do you use an upbeat attitude as a coping skill? <laughs> 
I'll be very honest. Sometimes I probably don't use it as much as I should. Mm. Tell us more. As much as fake, I know you're like real. Yeah, right? I'm too real, and sometimes that's not always a good thing. No, it's good. As much as I want to be like upbeat and optimistic, and you know, there are some people you walk into a room and they had the biggest fight, and then you come in like, oh, I don't want you. That was everything, and you have no idea what just but happened. But you know, you know, I think that's why so many people love you on Facebook. I mean, in real life too, but <laughs> um, but, but on Facebook specifically, I think because they are so in tune with your realness your real personality and i think it comes off Thank very you. much a camera for, for you yeah too. like so sometimes i feel like you know sometimes i wish i can kind of hide <laughs> when i'm not in a good mood or when something is really terrible but you can so see it on my face that even if i pretend to smile they're like what happened so, <laughs> so, I love that yes guy. she doesn't have a good poker face that's for sure all right, okay. ready? Ask last and final right, question well, last for the question. evening. Here All we right, go. we're wrapping up. How well do you use Avi? Awareness of your strengths as a coping skill. Mm, awareness of my strengths. Um, I think... That's a great question. Um, I do, yeah, that is a pretty good question. I do think um, the way I use my strengths is before before I became a therapist, if I, was feeling, if I woke up in the morning and I was feeling crappy... I was I would feel crappy the whole entire day mm. and I wouldn't understand why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. I would everything would be fine, right? Everything is okay, all every all's well, but I would just feel like low and down and sad and upset. I wouldn't even know why. Energy. Now that I'm a therapist, I'm able to if I'm if I wake up in the morning and I'm feeling crappy, I'm able to kind of tune into and channel into my mind and see like okay, what's what's going on right now? Try to backtrack. Okay, what happened yesterday in the morning? What happened midday? What happened at night? Find the trigger. Work out the problem. I'm reprocess thinking. what happened. Wow. And then kind of get that out of the way and start the day. That I feel like that helped me the most. That's a great um, tool. So, guys, thank you so, 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 so much, so much for tuning in. Wow, what a turnout. You know, we thought we yeah. failed with uh, having multiple yeah. lives today. And it ended up turning out to be We're so like amazing. A cat with nine <laughs> Thank you guys so much Thank for tuning, for tuning in. in. Wait, so what are we doing? I'm, I know I'm putting both of them on blast. I'm putting both of them on the spot. What's what the are question? we doing with going forward? We are going to have more shows. Ooh, getting ready. All right, guys. The only thing is trying to structure the time, the right. place. That's true. When we're all available. And so we love doing it. We, we, we do. absolutely love doing it. So yeah. as much as we want to do it on a weekly basis yeah. and have the same set of time so everyone right. knows we when to tune in. love all the support. Thank 100%. you so much. Uh, sometimes because of our schedules... Because, you know, Avi works at night, we both work at night, depending on what events we have coming up. Right. Certain days of the week, even though we want to plan ahead, it's not yeah, really it's in our hands feasible. to plan it ahead. So most of the time, we're going to try to be consistent. But this, is, this, was, this was really, 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 really enjoyable. I guys, you thank you so much it. for tuning in. Have we'll see night. you guys, hopefully, Until hopefully, next time, next have a great night while Avi right. pressing the end button. There we go. Bye.